Okay, so here's a quick video to kind of review what we did in class on the urinary system. Uh, any of you guys that missed class on that day, um, a good little tool for you. So, um, so basic idea that we started off with, we just said, hey, cells produce waste, um, lots of different forms, some of it toxic, um, and then blood flows by those cells, okay, pretty much always to the blood. I'm um, going to carry that waste away. Some of the waste examples would be like carbon dioxide, which then gets sent to the lungs, um, and then we have salts, like extra salts and nitrogenous waste. Those are kind of like your urea and uric acid. You'll uh, hopefully recognize those terms. Um, they get carried to the urinary system, and then the urinary system gets rid of them, which is the primary function of the urinary system, kind of remove those waste products, okay? Also does a couple other things. It regulates volume, so um, uh, control how much water we have in there. Uh, the composition, which is a big fancy word for the makeup, and pH, the measure of how acidic or basic we are. Um, helps regulate red blood cell production because we have a hormone called EPO. Um, it's made by the kidneys and it ends up going to the bone marrow and produces more red blood cells there. So it's a big, big uh, extra little um, function there. Okay? And then we also help regulate blood pressure by kind of really it's the volume. So volume and pressure are really kind of linked together here. So these two are going to kind of tie together. Um, in a lot of ways. Right. So the structure, we got we have, uh, the whole anatomy. Okay, we've got two kidneys, two ureters, um, we've got the bladder and the urethra. It's easier to actually see them in the diagram. Okay, so we've got our two kidneys, one on either side, right? Um, the this is where all the work is going to be done, and then really we have a tube that just squeezes everything down. That's called a ureter. Okay, um, the bladder holds the urine, and then the urethra is what we pee out of. So that's the basic anatomy. Um, the urethra, bladder, and ureter are all pretty boring in structure, but inside this kidney we have some cool things um, that we're going to learn about and spend most of our time on here. So um, so the most important vocab word in this unit is the nephron. So the nephron is the functional unit of the kidney, um, and functional means the part that does the work. So this is the part that does all that filtering and cleaning that we talked about. Okay? And to give you an idea, they're really small. Each kidney has about a million of these nephrons. So you got about two million. The average person has about two million of these nephrons. Okay. So what do they look like? Well, here's a nephron. So this it diagram is a nephron. Okay. Um, and the big idea is if I go back a couple pages, let's go to here. Okay. So this big red blood vessel. So your heart sits up here. The big red blood vessel here is your abdominal aorta. Blood comes down, and some of that blood branches and goes out into the kidney. Okay. And as it goes out into the kidney, it's going to really split into about a million different capillaries. Um, and each capillary breaks off like this. So here comes the blood coming in here, and then it goes into this little ball of blood vessels called the glomerulus. Okay? And the glomerulus is um, their capillary, so they're simple squamous epithelium. That's our thinnest uh, material in the body. And then they've got lots of holes punched in it. So they've got little holes punched in there. And, um, and then the blood vessel continues on elsewhere, okay? So the purpose of the glomerulus is to actually leak, okay? So what we're supposed to get is the filtrate, which is the all the stuff that um, leaks out, um, gets goes in here and gets collected by this Bowman's capsule, okay? And then starts along this tube, this pathway through the tube, okay? Now, um, the glomerulus, really, it's only separating by size. And if you kind of imagine it like a hose with some holes punched in it, uh, you are the biggest thing that, that controls it is pressure. So when, whenever blood pressure is pretty high, we get a lot more leaking here. When blood pressure is low, we get very little leaking. Um, and that's the biggest factor that controls how much actually leaks out. All right. Um, the capsule collects all that and then it sends it into this tube. Okay. Now the tube has a number of different chunks. You've got the proximal convoluted tubule, this first twisted portion. Okay. Then you've got this loop of Henle. Okay. So right here is called the loop of Henle. The distal convoluted tubule, kind of going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Okay, and then the last little bit here is the collecting duct before it officially becomes urine and starts its way down towards the bladder. Okay, so um, the most important part of this is knowing the vocab that goes along with it. So there are two key vocab words. The first is called um, is called reabsorption. So reabsorption. It's an A there. Sorry. Uh, so reabsorption, so the blood comes in here, leaks, and then the blood keeps going. Whatever didn't leak out keeps going, okay? Um, and pretty much this is going to be all the big stuff, um, as well as a lot, some of the plasma. Not everything leaks out here, okay? 
So reabsorption is when we take stuff that was in the tube. So reabsorption will be our green. Um, reabsorption is stuff that leaked out, but we don't want to lose it. So it's going to get pumped back into the bloodstream. Okay. Um, like water, glucose, amino acids. Those things are all small, okay? Um, and then they get reabsorbed and go back into the tube, okay? The opposite vocab word is secretion, okay? And secretion, we'll make that, uh, we'll make the black section here, okay? And secretion is when we actually, stuff that did not leak out, whether it was too big to leak out, because remember, these are small little holes, so it might not have leaked out, um, or if just not enough leaked out, we can actually pump stuff from the blood into this tube um, to make it, to get rid of it, right? So whatever's in this tube, uh, theoretically, will continue on through this whole process and become urine, all right? Um, so that's kind of the idea and where we're heading with this, okay? So what you really need to know, come time for our quiz, is you need to know the parts, okay? Which isn't too hard, okay? Clean this up a little bit. So you need to know all these little pieces, okay? So um, starting off with the glomerulus in the beginning, okay? And its job is to leak. It's got little holes in it called fenestrae, and it leaks, okay? Then the Bowman's capsule collects all that, collects the filtrate, the stuff that leaks out. Okay? It starts into the tube, and the first part's the proximal convoluted tubule, and it's got a big list of things it reabsorbs here. Um, in, in class, we said a way of cheating to kind of summarize this is we lumped all that beginning portion there, and we called that the good stuff, okay? So in the proximal convoluted tube, we reabsorb things we want to keep amino acids, creatine, lactic acid, all those uh, calcium. We don't want to pee out all that calcium. We worked hard for digesting and absorbing that stuff. Water, um, negative ions that you need for like the neurons um, and muscles to function. So, um, and then we also do some secretion. And I just gave you a couple little examples. So penicillin, histamine, and hydrogen ions um, are some uh, examples of the stuff that we kind of secrete here. Okay, so active secretion. Um, versus reabsorbing the good stuff. All of that happens in this first chunk right there called the proximal convoluted tube. Right. Then we move into the loop of Henle. In the loop of Henle, we're going to reabsorb water and really salt. Okay, that's really what we're going to absorb, water and salt, water and electrolytes. Um, so in here, so remember, reabsorption means we're taking it from this tube and putting it back into the blood. We're keeping it in the body. Right? Um, versus secretion here was something we were getting rid of. We were pumping it into the tube to get rid of it. Right? Um, after the loop of Henle, you've got the distal convoluted tubule. Okay, so the distal convoluted tubule. And here we're going to reabsorb some more water, some more salt. But the biggest thing is this last little box here. We also reabsorb hydrogen ions. Oh, sorry, we secrete hydrogen ions. So this is an area that if your body is acidic, we can actually take hydrogen ions and pump them into here. Um, makes the urine acidic, but lowers the the, um, the city of your body. Okay, um, and if we were a little bit basic, what we would do is we would just block that. So we wouldn't secrete those hydrogen ions. We'd hold on to those hydrogen ions, and that would help balance our pH out. Okay? Last little chunk was the collecting duct, and the collecting duct we left vague for a reason. Um, it's kind of your purposeful adjustment. So if you're dehydrated, you'll take back extra water there. Um, if you're really low on calcium, you'll take back extra calcium there. Um, if you have excess of something, or there's something you really need to get rid of, you can kind of pump it into that tube. Um, so it kind of depends really on your day-to-day, moment-to-moment needs um, of the body. All right? um, a lot of it's under hormonal control. All right? In the end, we've got our urine. Okay? So that's what we've got down here, a list. Um, and generally, it's about 95% water. Um, the urea and uric acid components. So urea and uric acid. Um, that's the nitrogenous waste, the nitrogen-based waste um, that comes from any protein use in the body. So building protein, breaking down protein, automatically uh, produces this urea, uric acid. It's what makes your uh, urine yellow, makes you, gives urine the characteristic smell, all that kind of stuff. All right? um, and then amino acids and some electrolytes. There's usually some of each of those in there. Okay? Abnormal stuff, we talked about this is abnormal because glucose is good for us. So glucose is one of those good things, one of the good stuff. Right? So glucose should be reabsorbed. Um, protein and blood cells are too big. They should never be able to leak out at this glomerulus. Protein and blood cells are too big for those little holes. So if they're showing up in urine, usually what that means is you've actually shredded, you've damaged this glomerulus, and the holes have been ripped open, and we get all sorts of issues there. Okay? Um, can be simple explanations, but those are uh, the most common big ones.
and that's kind of the big idea that we've got going on. So we're going to either reabsorb, we're going to secrete stuff. Um, as it makes its way through, we're ultimately going to make, um, get rid of hopefully waste products um, with as little water as possible, right? and keep all the good stuff in the body. That's the big goal. The last little bit, um, from depending on the year, sometimes we get into some of these details and sometimes we don't. Uh, so if this isn't familiar with you, just kind of ignore it. Um, but here is the structure of the kidney. Here is the blood vessel going in. That's the renal arteries. So the blood coming in then branches off. And out here is where you'd find all the nephrons, out in this section. And the, the portions of a kidney are usually divided up this way. This outer chunk right here, okay, um, that is called the cortex, renal cortex. Renal is the prefix that means kidney, okay, so renal cortex, all right. Um, from here to here, going outward, um, it's called the medulla, renal medulla. Okay? And then this whole middle chunk, in this way, um, that whole portion is going to be the pelvis or sinus. And functionally, um, they can be actually broken down a little bit more in there. So the medulla can be broken down into two chunks. So where the blood vessels are here, this little chunk, is called a column. Okay? And then this little triangular section right here is called a renal pyramid. Okay? Um, and let me clean up all of that stuff. Um, actually, you know what? We can keep it the same. We'll do this. We'll go down here on the bottom. So the way it would typically work in, the blood would come in. Right? Here comes blood flowing in through here spread it up, going down here to the nephron. So in here would be the glomerulus, the Bowman's capsule, all this stuff. And then this actually is like the uh, collecting ducts flowing down through here. So then the urine gets kind of trapped, gets all funneled down here. So urine's being made in this direction, going in this direction, you're draining, draining, draining. All of that will flow out into that ureter. And that's what that is right there. That's the ureter. That's going to drain all the fluid down to the kidneys and go from there. Uh, so that's the big overview of the structure of a kidney. And as we zoom out, if we go out and we zoom in, you, you can actually see a little bit here. So here's the cortex, right? So here's cortex. This is the medulla with one pyramid in the middle, right? This triangular is the pyramid in the middle um, with the column to the outside, the renal column to the outside. And you can see the blood vessels coming out, breaking off, and then this is the um, collecting ducts, draining everything down in this direction, going towards the center of the kidney and out of the body. All right, and then another little diagram showing the exact same thing. Nothing terribly special. So here's the the urine would drain right down in here into the middle um, of the uh, kidney. So the most important in terms of what we're doing, guys, this is a really simplified view, but in terms of what we're doing, this structure, this nephron is what you really want to spend most of your time studying on. What do the parts do? The big overall picture of everything leaking, being collected, and then reabsorption, secretion, making changes as it goes through. So by the time we go all the way through this big tunnel, all the way down to this end, that's our uh, urine. And, it's, um, and ideally, we're not wasting anything, and we're holding on to everything that's useful for the body. All right, hope that helps. Let me know if there's any questions.